Hello, and welcome to the World Wanderers podcast. My name is Amanda, and I'll be your host for today. Uh, Ryan is in Atlanta at the moment, so he is not here to record with me. So I will be your only host for today. And just with the craziness of the summer, we took a little bit of a break from podcasting weekly, and it's time to get back into it and share more of our experiences traveling the world. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, a trip that I took this summer to Glacier National Park. And when I was in my yoga teacher training in Bali, uh, which we talked about on a previous episode, um, I met a really good friend who lives in Bozeman, Montana. So we made a plan to get together somewhere that was about halfway for us. So Glacier National Park is about four hours from Banff Banff National Park or three hours from Calgary in Alberta. I'm just headed directly south, crossing the border into Montana. And for my friend Chelsea, it was just about, I think it was about five hours kind of northwest for her. So basically right in the middle. Um, Spending every day in Banff National Park, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I'd seen photos of Glacier National Park and it obviously looked really beautiful and I love the mountains. So I was super excited to go. But as I approached the park, I could see um, Chief Mountain is one of the big mountains there. And it's kind of square and kind of sticks out for a long ways as you're driving. And I was just really impressed right off the get-go with how beautiful the surroundings were. And so Chelsea and I met at St. Mary's uh, Visitor Center, which is on the east side of the National Park. Uh, We basically hopped into one car and headed out on the going to the Sun Road. And so going to the Sun Road is basically like the famous road that runs right through the middle of the park. And it's kind of like the all access point to get to different hikes throughout the National Park and to get to all of like the major campgrounds kind of from east to west or west to east. Um, it takes a couple hours to drive from one end to the other, but part of that is that this road is just two lanes. So one going one direction, the other one coming the other direction. It's very windy. It's very small and it's basically carved out of the side of a mountain. So, um, I made a video at one point while we were driving just cause it was so windy and crazy and you drive super slow And it's totally worth it because you're just, you see this valley to your left and you're surrounded by these incredible mountain ranges all around you and all these really beautiful peaks and of course glaciers. So we kind of took our time as we made our way from St. Mary's on the east side um, along the going to the sun road. And we stopped at Logan Pass, which is, there's a visitor center there. It's maybe like an hour and a half into the park from the east. Um, and there's a super popular hike there that you can do called Hidden Lake. And Hidden Lake is about a 2.7 mile hike. So it's not a big hike. It's not super strenuous, but it is a good way to sort of kick off your start to the national park. There's a visitor center there where you can go check out and you can learn about all the different animals that you might see while you're in the park. And there's good infrastructure. So it's a nice little hike to get yourself started in the park and to just get yourself acquainted with the area. So we started our time in Glacier National Park with the Hidden Lake hike. We had both, by the time we met up, we've both been in the car for a couple of hours. It was well into the afternoon, beautiful weather when we were down there in August. So uh, we did that hike and basically you kind of like pop over the small hill and then you see this lake, i.e. the name Hidden Lake. And it's surrounded by a mountain called uh, Bear Hat Mountain. And it basically looks like one of those ranger hats that you would see, I guess, like Yogi Bear wear. So uh, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little starter hike. Or if you're traveling with people who don't hike a lot or small children, definitely something I would recommend doing. Um, From there, Chelsea and I continued through the park and we're looking for camping. And one thing that we hadn't been aware of prior to this is that you can't reserve camping beforehand in Glacier National Park. So there's no, well, there's, there's maybe like one or two campsites that are reserved on the very West side. But other than that, it's all first come first serve. And so we waited till like the late afternoon in the middle of the summer to try and get a camping spot. 
and nothing on the west side was available. We went to the Lake McDonald campsite, which is obviously by Lake McDonald, um, sort of towards West Glacier. And then we went to the Apgar Visitor Center, which is also West Glacier. And we ended up having to drive outside of the park on the west side and go to um, a privately owned like forestry campground. So luckily we found like a beautiful spot there, um, super affordable. I think it was about $15 a night American and uh, just set up camp like right beside the river. Um, so if you are traveling down there, especially in the busy season, that is something to be aware of. And something that we learned pretty quickly is you kind of have to get yourself up in the morning and you need to go find camping, especially if you're going to move spots or get in there early, find a campsite and kind of make that your spot for the entire time you're there and just go around from there. Cause the furthest you're going to have to drive is like two hours, uh, which is totally doable and worth it, especially if you're traveling on going to the sun road and you can just you know, taking the surroundings and stuff like that. And another thing with Glacier National Park is that it's, um, it's grizzly country out there. So it's really important to have bear spray. And it's also really important if you're car camping to make sure that you're not just dumping your leftover food in the bushes and that you're always, you know, washing your dishes and then dumping your water in the dump stations and always taking all of your food back to your car. Um, it's interesting coming from somewhere like Banff National Park because in Lake Louise, there's a lot of grizzly bear risk and you actually can't camp or you actually can't hike in groups smaller than four. Um, you can actually get a ticket from a ranger if you do that. So it was interesting to me that, you know, we saw solar hike, solo hikers. We hiked in a group of two, um, which is like totally acceptable in Glacier National Park, but there is a huge awareness of, you know, what grizzlies are capable of doing. And then, also making sure that you do have your bear spray on you pretty much all ta- at all times. Um, so the first night we learned our lesson and, you know, we camped in this like forestry service campground outside of the national park. And then the next day we got up pretty early and made our way back from West Glacier and we found camping um, right at Lake McDonald. And Lake McDonald is absolutely spectacular. It's just this beautiful, serene lake um, surrounded by mountains and trees. It's the biggest lake in the national park. Um, There's a ton of stuff you can do on it. Like there's a massive lodge that you can stay at. There's restaurants. um, There's a boat you can take to do a tour around it. You can rent like kayaks, paddle boards, a whole bunch of water sports you can do. Or you can just be like us and you can just go swimming, which is free and pretty amazing. And it's awesome after a day of hiking. Um, so once we found a place to camp at Lake McDonald's, we did a hike to Avalanche Lake and Avalanche Lake is a 4.5 mile hike return. Um, so longer than Hidden Lake, but definitely a very doable hike with as a family or with children and something I would highly recommend. A lot of the hike was sort of through the trees and it had a very like foresty feel to it. The trees had like massive roots everywhere. There was a lot of moss and vegetation. And then we got out of the trees, sort of like a steady incline going up, but not steep. And we got out of the trees and just this beautiful lake surrounded by mountains in every direction, sort of like in this little valley. And the lake was a beautiful, beautiful blue. So kind of hung out there for a while. The lake was really cold. So I think it was probably fed by glacial waters. Um, But kind of the perfect half-day hike. So we did that. And then we had time to come back, eat some lunch, and then go for our swim at Lake McDonald. Which, you know, hiking is kind of the thing to do in Glacier National Park. At the same time, there's, you know, other activities to do if you're around the Lake McDonald area. So Avalanche Lake is a really great hike to do if you want to spend other time doing stuff as well. Um, On our third day in Glacier National Park, we drove through the Going to the Sun Road once again. um, And we exited Glacier National Park on the east side and drove just a little ways up the highway. and went into a second entrance to the many glacier area of Glacier National Park. And, you know, there's a ton of different areas because you can also 
instead of going north to go up to Many Glacier, you can also go south. And then there's other areas south that you can go to, um, which I've seen photos in there look incredible. Um, but we decided to go north to Many Glacier. And we drove sort of on this very rugged road, kind of very beautiful scenery, but not the best road, um, and then got into the national park that way and set up camp at Many Glacier, which once again fills up super quickly. So it's really important to get there early if um, you do want to camp there. And our first day there, we did a 9.7 mile hike up to Iceberg Lake. And this hike was spectacular. It was a super hot day when we did it. And you kind of walk, you go past Tarmogen Falls, and there's a point where you can either go one way to Tarmogen Tunnel, which apparently is also really cool, or you can continue on to Iceberg Lake, which is what we did. And it kind of winds like sort of almost, it's like up and down, but it's not super steep. And you kind of walk just along the side of the mountain. And you get these spectacular views of the valley and the surrounding mountains in Many Glacier. And it was just spectacular. Like, words can't describe it. And I'll definitely post some photos in the show notes. Um, But just really impressive scenery there. And then getting to the lake was pretty cool because you get there and it's this glacial-fed lake with all these, like, small icebergs in it. And so um, it's it's got this massive like wall of rock on one side, which I think at one point was probably filled with a glacier, but now it's mostly just, there's some ice along it, but just, you know, this massive sort of like scoop of rock and you just kind of sit at the bottom and you can enjoy the outdoors. And if you're like the guys that were kind of in the area and not with us, but were there, you can go swimming in this super freezing cold water, which I don't know, is apparently cool. But, you know, I like staying warm, so I didn't do that. Um, Really beautiful place to hang out. You can take some lunch up with you. Um, And then we just headed back down and hung out at the Many Glacier campsite. And, you know, for $15 a night, the campgrounds are really well maintained in Glacier National Park. They're pretty formal. They've got a a camp ground supervisor that comes by every night and make sure everything is okay. Uh, lots, of, lots of bathroom facilities. And then with each of the campgrounds, there's sort of like a little corner store that has like your basics, like, you know, firewood or delicious beverages and that sort of thing. Um, so just really impressive infrastructure and services throughout the national park. Then On our last day in Glacier National Park, we stayed overnight at Many Glacier for a second night, which was actually pretty amazing because we had been moving around quite a bit throughout our trip. Um, And the second, our second day, fourth day in Glacier National Park, second day at Many Glacier, we did a hike to Grinnell Glacier. And so this is a pretty, it's classified as a strenuous hike, and I would probably agree with that. Um, You can do... There's a lower lake and an upper lake. So there's options as you hike. You can kind of just like turn off or turn around at any point. But you kind of walk flat for a couple kilometers. And then you have the option to stay on the ground, like stay sort of on the down. And you can go to the lower lake. Or you can can begin an ascent up. Um, to head up to Grinnell Glacier, the upper upper lake. And so that's what we did. And we walked oh, for hours. It took quite a while to get up there. And at one point, you can see sort of the glacier in the distance, and you're like, oh, my gosh, am I going there? And sure enough, you are. So it kind of is a steady incline. It's not straight up a mountain by any means, but it's a steady incline for probably a good hour um, getting to the glacier though was absolutely worth it. It's receded quite a bit in the last few years. I think like most glaciers in probably the world. Um, but there's massive chunks of ice just all over this glacial water. And it's sort of almost like a gray color, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of the glacial lakes in Banff National Park are this turquoise blue, which is also really beautiful. But it was cool to see something that was different from home and different to something that I was used to. Um, And so 
12 mile hike this one is return, which is, um, 19.3 kilometers. And I think, well, I don't think I, I know this is the longest hike that I've ever done in one day. Um, Ryan and I, you know, did a Machu Picchu trek and we've done some cool overnight trekking and that sort of thing. But 19.3 kilometers is definitely the most I've done in one day. Um, and after the four days of hiking, I was pretty wiped by that point. Um, I had blisters on both of my heels, which is pretty awesome. It was definitely worth it though. So if you're going to be in the many glacier area, I would highly suggest checking out Grinnell Glacier. Um, and I'll post some show notes or post some photos on the show notes so that everyone can go check out, you know, what it looks like. Um, but I would recommend this one for sure. And I think too, with, if you're visiting Glacier National Park, there are hundreds of hikes to do in the area and it's really hard to pick and choose. Like I had read that, you know, Tarmogen Tunnel was really cool. And another one in the area of many glacier that sounded amazing was Cracker Lake, which is a turquoise glacial fed lake, um, which is also a big one like Grinnell Glacier. And I think that any of those would be amazing. There's one from uh, Logan Pass called the High Line where you basically walk like along the side of a mountain and you can see from the visitor center and as you're driving on going to the Sun Road where the path goes and it literally is just this tiny path etched into the side of the mountain. And it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And I think that regardless of what you choose to do in Glacier, Glacier National Park, you'd have a good time. Um, I would highly recommend the four hikes that Chelsea and I did. Um, and once again, I will post, you know, the links to the resources that we used when deciding what to do, as well as photos from our trip, um, showing you exactly, you know, what the things that we saw looked like. And those show notes will be at www.theworldwanders.com. Um, Yeah, and since this is just a solo episode, it's just a quick little guy with just some basic overview of um, my trip to Glacier National Park. So if you have any questions or comments, please reach out on the website. And always, as always, if you're enjoying the podcast, please reach out on Facebook or Twitter at The World Wanders. Thanks so much for listening. Have an amazing day.